Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we will be finishing up with the basics, and we'll be doing that by talking about the way Redstone interacts with blocks. And considering the fact that Minecraft is entirely about blocks, I'm sure you can easily realize just how important this video is going to be. So, to start off, I'm in this big, empty wilderness just like before. And just like before, there's an igloo. So, if I try walking up to the igloo and opening the door, big surprise, I can't do it because it's an iron door and nothing's changed since the last video I recorded, so you still can't open iron doors by right-clicking on them. But if you notice, next to the iron door, there's a lever. And if I flip the lever, then the iron door opens and closes. So I'm essentially able to control the iron door with the lever because the lever is sending power to the iron door. Alright, stop. Hammer time. Because this is a perfect example of the phrase, it makes sense if you don't think about it. Because look where the lever is placed. It's not placed on the door. It's not next to the door. Next to the door, there's little blocks. The lever is in front of the door. And not only is it in front of the door, it's in front of the door and off to the side. There is absolutely no logical reason why this lever should be able to send power to the door. So why is the lever still able to send power to the door? Simple. It's not the lever that's powering the door. It's the block that the lever is on. And this is because of the way redstone interacts with blocks. So, to demonstrate this, I've built a very simple redstone device. It's just a lever going into a repeater, going into a block. And even though this is really simple, something interesting is happening here. And that is that this block, since it's receiving a redstone signal, in this case from a repeater, but it can be any redstone signal, when a block receives a redstone signal, it starts holding the redstone signal. And not only does it hold the redstone signal, it starts emitting the redstone signal. So, if I place, say, a piston on top of a block, the block is sending power to the piston. And I can have this piston on any side of the block because the block is what's emitting the power. I can even have it underneath the block. Because again, block is emitting power since it's receiving a redstone signal. And just to drive the point home that the block actually is emitting a redstone signal, if I place redstone dust next to it, you'll notice the redstone dust becomes powered. And that's because, again, blocks emitting redstone signal. And one interesting thing you can do with this is you can have whatever you're powering with your redstone behind a wall, and no one will be able to see what you're powering. This is a really interesting way of getting your friends to blow themselves up by placing a piece of TNT behind a wall and placing lever or some redstone signal going into it. So our TNT device can now be a little bit more obscure and hidden, thanks to this. So, just to demonstrate it in a little bit different context, I also have a torch going into it. And again, it works with any redstone signal. So, again, if I'm sending power into the block with the torch, torch sending power into the block, and block is now emitting power into the piston, and I can get power out like that. And an interesting effect of this is that I can hide whatever device I'm powering in the ceiling so I can have TNT above my friend and they can blow themselves up like this. So just with this one simple principle, the possibilities for getting your friends to blow themselves up has become endless. So yeah. Now, there are a few quirks to this. If I send power into a block using redstone dust, it still works perfectly fine. That's not the issue at all. The issue is, I can't take power back out of the block using redstone dust. That's the only quirk to it. And that's just, you know, it's again, it's just a quirk in redstone. I can take it out using something else, like a repeater. So, repeater, I can, I can see, see, I can power out. I can take the power out of the block using a torch. So, there. I just can't do it with redstone dust. And that's just one of the quirks of redstone. And you have to sort of work around that. Or maybe it even works to your advantage, depending on what situation you're in. Now, another thing that 
not, isn't really a quirk, but it's just something a lot of people don't tend to consider, is when you have redstone dust on top of a block, which you always do, that block is receiving a redstone signal from the redstone dust. Meaning, all the blocks your redstone dust are on top of are emitting redstone signals. So I can place blocks on the side or underneath, and they will receive power. So yeah, there you go. And this is one another thing, that, again, not really a quirk, just th something a lot of people don't tend to consider. If I have redstone signal that's going down like this, if you place a block on top of it, it's going to cut off the signal. So, you know, that's just something a lot of people don't tend to consider. Now, there actually is a solution to this. If you ha wanted to have a signal going down and you want to have a block here, that, and you still wanted the redstone power to go down, there is a solution to this. The solution is use a transparent block, like glass or glowstone. And if you use a transparent block, they don't block redstone signals like that. And there. Now really, that's most of what I want to cover in this video. The only other thing I want to cover in this video is piston logic, because we've talked about how we can use torches, we talked about how we can use repeaters. Another thing you see a lot in restaurant devices is pistons, and I want to talk about how they work, because there tends to be some confusion about it that I've, I've, I've seem to notice. Piston logic is actually really easy, and I'm just actually going to extend this out a bit and do like this. I'm going to do two piston contraptions here. First piece of piston logic, just piston with a block, which is too far back, because I'm a genius. And there. Now, if I have power going through here, simple enough, power goes through, but I can use a piston to push a block in the way and block the signal. That's it. That's piston logic. That's what every single big fancy piston thing you're doing is actually doing. It's just blocking redstone signals. And another thing is that it doesn't have to block it by pushing the block into the way. It can also block do it by pushing the block out of the way. So I can have a piston like this, and it now pushes the block out of the way, and now the signal can go through. So there, I just wanted to talk about piston logic, because that's all it is. It's not fancy, it's not complicated, it's that simple. And one other thing I want to talk about is glowstone logic. Now, glowstone logic, a lot of people make this way, way more complicated than it actually is. Glowstone logic is actually really simple. I already have a video called How to Use Redstone with Glowstone on my channel that goes, I think it does a pretty good job of explaining how glowstone logic works. But just to quickly demonstrate, first off, obviously, if I block redstone with glowstone, it, it again doesn't go down. But the thing that makes glowstone special is it's a transparent block that you can place redstone dust on top of. That's all that makes it special. The only other thing that makes it special is that if I have a piece of glowstone here, and I actually need to break this for, because it'll interfere, but I'll explain that when I get to it. But if I have redstone dust and sending power up here, glowstone doesn't let redstone power travel downward. So this doesn't let any redstone signal travel downwards from the glowstone block. If I want power to go downwards, I have to have to move it to a solid block and then move downwards. That's glowstone logic. It's not hard, it's really easy. It's just a transparent block, so it doesn't block signals, and it also doesn't let power travel downwards. Now, the reason I had to break the wire here is because since glowstone doesn't block signals, this actually lets the signal from down here travel upwards, so... Yeah, there, there you go. And really, that is the end of the basics of redstone. If you are using redstone in pretty much any context, this is all you need to know. That's it. That's all there is in all the mechanics of redstone. There's nothing else. That's it. It's that easy. It's not this big, scary monstrosity that everyone else make, tends to make it out to be. It's easy. It's simple. And yeah. So... Let's talk for a minute. Although you pro pretty much understand everything there is to know about redstone right now, you probably don't really know how to sit down and make a really complicated redstone device. You probably can't sit down and create, I don't know, a calculator, just for something that came to mind. 
or something like that. So, what the rest of the series is going to talk about is how you can do things like that. What components go into making these big fancy redstone devices that uh, you hear about, and how you can make any redstone device that's more advanced than blowing your friend up. So, there, that's what we're going to cover in the next video. But, if you want to make sure you're ready, like, for, if you're a little bit shaky on everything we've covered so far, I'll just propose a couple of restaurant devices that you can build, and if you can figure out how to build them, you're pretty much set in terms of understanding what I wanted you to get out of these first two videos. So, one moment while I go over to those. Alright, we're back. So, as you can see, I'm in this really tiny snow hut with a uh, button in the back and an iron door. Now, if I press the button, it'll give me some time to get to the door, and then it'll open it, and it'll let me through. So, simple enough. If you can figure out how to do that without exposing any of the wiring, you've gotten everything I want you to get out of the first two videos. So, if you can do that, even if it's not nearly as small as this, in fact, you can probably make it a lot smaller than this, I just sort of threw it together, but... Yeah, it doesn't matter how big it is as long as it works and you're not showing the wiring. And if you're up for a bit more of a challenge, make a button on the front that ta doesn't have the delay. So this one opens it pretty much instantly. This one has a delay. And if you're up for even more of a challenge than that, see if you can make a lock switch. So if I hit this, you'll notice the door is locked and I can't open it from inside or outside. And really, if you're doing the lock, it, it doesn't matter if it can open from the inside or the outside. If you can make it lock either side, you've got, you've really got the point. But if you can do the lock, then really, you're a step ahead of the game, because that's the type of stuff I'm going to be talking about later, like how to figure out the logic to do things like locking and then more advanced logic and stuff. So yeah. But yeah, this is just for people who are either up for a challenge or they just they want to see if they got what I wanted them to get out of these first few videos. And if you can do just the first thing, get just get the button with hidden wiring that opens the door on delay, you got what I want you to get out of this video. So thank you. And next time we'll be talking about how to make logical components, which can make some pretty interesting things. And you, you'll hear all about the interesting things you can do with those in the next video. Thank you. See you then.